Now let's hear from our two distinguished guests. First, Coach Miller, tell us your thoughts on the renewed rivalry. Well, I, I think we're in a, a part of the country that's rich in college basketball tradition. Um, certainly, I've, I've talked about this for two years. It's, it's one of the things that I love about coaching basketball at Cincinnati is the, the pride and the passion of our fan base. Uh, people love college basketball, but there's other institutions in this area, you know, that, that have that have similar fan bases and similar passion for our game. And when you can put those two two of those programs together, uh, it, it's it's a special thing in non-conference play. And certainly, we get that every year with the crosstown shootout. Uh, but as, as I, I didn't realize when I moved to Cincinnati how close Dayton was. You know, I th think we're within an hour, and sometimes it feels like uh, with all the suburbs that the, the two cities are almost connected. Uh, I'm very well aware of uh, just the, the tradition of Dayton basketball and the fan support, and then learning more about, you know, the, the history of the two programs playing against each other. Uh, I think it'll be great for uh, the city of Cincinnati uh, for our program to play a, a high-profile game against a, a great program, great, great coach uh, here in Cincinnati in a neutral environment. And again, as close as Dayton is, it, it'll be neat to have, as, as you mentioned, Brooks, two, two fan bases in a true neutral environment in the same arena. That doesn't happen a whole lot anymore in college basketball. Coach Grant, same question to you. What's it mean to have UC back on the schedule? Well, I think I, I would echo, you know, Wes's comments. I think, you know, first and foremost, you're looking at two very tradition-rich programs. You know, I'm fortunate that, you know, I played at Dayton, and I can remember uh, during my time at Dayton playing against UC and that rivalry and the history, and I think you've got two of the elite fan bases in the country. I know uh, in a non-conference game to get this quality of an opponent on our schedule is a great opportunity for our guys, and, you know, I know our guys are excited about it. We're looking forward to it, and I know the fan base is – are really excited about the opportunity to renew the rivalry, so I think we're all looking forward to it. One more question for you guys, and we'll open it up to the media. Coach Miller, tell us about your expectations for the upcoming season. <clears throat> well, it's uh, you know it's a lot of movement for UC athletics, certainly uh, for for our program moving into the Big Twelve. Um, you know, it's been you know no matter which way you look at it, it's been the best basketball conference in America for the last five, six, seven, eight years. Um, we've known about it now for over a year, so we've been preparing um, for that move, for that challenge. We're excited about it. And the expectation always when you coach at Cincinnati is you have a team that competes nationally uh, with, with everybody in, in college basketball, that you have a team that, that represents Cincinnati in the NCAA tournament, and now a, a team that can compete in the Big 12. So that's the expectation. and. You know, you, you take a job like you see, you know that walking through the door. Uh, we're not spending a lot of time day to day worried about results right now. We're spending a lot of time worried about getting better every day and having a productive summer and doing the right thing. So that's my expectation right now is that we get better in practice and we take the floor later today, uh, that we put a, a day together that results in a week uh, so we can look back and, and say that we had a really good summer here when our, our summer session ends in a couple weeks. Um, but yeah, there's major expectations. We like that. There's high stakes. We're in a big time conference now. Um, so we're really looking forward to this year. Coach Grant, same thing. You've got a good core coming back. Uh, what are you, what's your expectations for the coming season? Well, I think for us, um, you know, we've got a lot of new pieces that we're trying to integrate to our team. We've got most of our guys on campus right now, uh, most of them. Uh, available to us. We've got uh, a foreign tour that we're getting ready for here in a couple of weeks. So I think for me it's about uh, learning our team, having them learn us, terminology, uh, you know, just how we play, uh, the standards, the expectations and those things. But I'm excited about the group. I think we've got a, a really a really good group of guys. Uh, they, they get along really well. I think they, they like to compete. You know, so we're excited about the potential that we have. Great. We'll turn it open to the floor. I've got uh, Andre Fouché, uh, who will be our media relations director and tournament director for this event. He's got the mic, so just state your name and, and affiliation. Ask your question. 
Uh, Keegan Nixon with Bearcat Journal. Wes, which side kind of initiated these talks in this renewed rivalry? You said, wh which side? Yeah, what? Which side? Which team? Which administration kind of initiated the talks? You know, I, I, honestly, I'm not quite sure. Um, I, I think athletic directors were, were talking about this for a while. I, I know communicating directly with Anthony and I. Anthony and I have not talked about the game directly probably until today. Uh, but I, it's something that I've supported from the moment that I heard it because, as Anthony mentioned, you're looking for high-level non-conference games that will help prepare you for league play, that will help prepare you to be an NCAA tournament team. Um, we're, we're looking for those opportunities in non-league, and playing Dayton certainly gives us that opportunity. And then you also kind of check a box of, of playing in a, a big-time college basketball environment, you know, and, and playing against a, a, a local program with a ton of history and tradition. So on a lot of levels, the game makes sense. I was Ron Roberts with that large bid. Uh, you added six new additions over the off season. What are some of the challenges with that, those additions? And how does a game like this help prepare you for conference play? What are the challenges with the additions? Um, well, you know, that's, that's becoming more of a normal thing in college basketball, uh, you know, to have, I think we have six, as you say six, I believe we have seven newcomers. Um, seven newcomers is probably about average <laughs> over the last couple of years. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's just really important to start to learn each other this time of year as, as quickly as possible. So we have, like the, the summer, the time we have on the floor, uh, the time we have together as a group off the floor in the weight room, that time is really valuable in the summer because the sooner that we can get to know each other, uh, build some real genuine relationships, start learning how to work together, that's gonna help us to assimilate as we get into the season. And as you mentioned, you know, you got to go th through some things in the non-conference to get ready for league play, especially when you have new bodies and new faces. Um, so playing some really difficult games and being tested early in the year, that's going to help any team, but it's certainly going to help a team where there's some new faces around. Neil Moore with the front office news. Wes, you mentioned the Midwest basketball style here in this area between schools like Xavier, Dayton, and yourself. Just talk about how exciting it is for the city of Cincinnati not only to play two predominant programs like Xavier and Dayton here this couple, upcoming season, and one especially being here on a neutral site. Yeah, well, you know, I've always said this. It's every, every game to a coach or to a player matters. I mean, we're all really competitive, and um, we all really care about, about winning. But there's something that matters a little different when it's local and, uh, and, and fan bases are engaged. You know, those are the kind of environments we all love to play in as players. Uh, we certainly enjoy coaching in. And so in this area, there's opportunities for that. And, and we're always going to seek out those opportunities because those are the types of environments that, that add to a college basketball season. And, uh, I think our kids want to play in those environments. I think kids who are recruiting want to play in those environments. And playing against a program like Dayton and Anthony's, Anthony's team, that's exciting. Like our guys, our guys watched Obi Top and, and, you know, they paid attention. Uh, so it's, it, it's exciting, it's, it's positive, and we'll continue to seek out local games uh, moving forward. David Jablonski, Dayton Daily News. For both of you, how did you decide to play this on a neutral court as opposed to a home and home? Well, I think as Wes mentioned, I think the administration of both universities got together and uh, you know looked at a way to renew the rivalry, and uh, you know trying to decide where the best place was for it. Uh, this facility, obviously, is a neutral site that was available, and we felt like uh, uh, accessible to both fan bases. So I think it just made sense to do it here.
Scott Springer, Cincinnati Enquirer. Uh, Coach, uh, did you ever play Dayton before at any of your previous stops? And what's your knowledge of, of the Flyers? I mean, normally they have a pretty good fan base. That's how they got the first four and all that stuff. No, I've never coached or played against Dayton. I played in Dayton's arena in 2006 in the NCAA tournament as a player, and we lost to George Mason in the second round. So I don't want to ever play there again. Uh, <laughs> just jo joking. But, um, but no, I've, I've never coached or, or played a game against Dayton. But, I, you know, I've just followed Dayton's program for years and have tremendous respect for the history of the program and then for the job that Anthony's done and, uh, and some of the teams that he's had here over the last couple years. Katie Capusto with Spectrum News. Coach Grant, this is the second uh, game announced this preseason against a team here in Ohio. Can you talk a little bit about the importance about playing these in-state uh, opponents? Yeah. Well, I think you've got such uh, tradition-rich programs here in the state. You know, uh, a lot of history of success, you know, between, uh, I think, just in this region. You know, as Wes mentioned, in the Midwest, you've got, you know, so many great basketball programs and such great fan bases that it just makes sense, you know, that if you get a chance to get your teams together and it makes sense for both teams that you do it. So uh, we're excited, you know, for the opportunities that, that we have in front of us. Coach, there's uh, seven guys on your roster on the website. I'm going to assume you're going to have more than seven when you come <laughs> December 16th. Uh, yeah, I, I think we've updated the website, if I'm not mistaken. I, I think uh, we've got a, a pretty current roster. Uh, as Wes mentioned, you know, you've, you've got, uh, I think, the normal uh, activity right now for college basketball is, is, there, is there's fluctuation in your roster. So uh, I think we've been able to put together a, a group of guys that are, uh, will be competitive, that are excited to play with each other and looking forward to, to getting prepared for the upcoming season. Coach Grant, obviously with the second year option for this matchup, is there interest? I'm sorry, say that again. The second year option for the matchup for next season in yeah. 2024. Do you think there's interest on both sides that this could turn back into a consistent annual rivalry? Well, I don't think we've had that conversation as of yet, so I'd be making something up if I were to respond to that. I really, you know, we're looking forward to this opportunity in front of us, and then we'll see what happens from there. I'll add, too, that in talking to the administrators and the ADs, uh, when it came to the second year, just because of the fluctuation of, of college basketball, uh, obviously UC going to the Big 12, just the normal churn that's happening right now, that's, it's the options there, but no commitment yet. <clears throat> there, there's not been a game here in some time uh, Will there be a new floor? Is there a floor here? Or who makes the floor? Or will it be decorated with this logo and all that stuff? Uh, as a matter of fact, that's a great question. Uh, they do have a floor. Uh, but we're going to bring in a, a new floor for this game, new floor and goals uh, for the setup. So uh, it'll look pretty sharp. They've got new uh, seating going in, as you will you can step out and check out after the press conference. So some renovations are underway. They've got a lot more plans for other renovations, but we'll take care of the playing surface, and it'll be, uh, be top-notch with the logos, et cetera.